Good day. The most significant development in a macroeconomic standpoint was the US Federal Reserve announcing a shift in its inflation targeting regime from being forward-looking symmetrical to an average one. The new regime will entail the Fed looking into US inflation history. What this means is that should inflation average around 2.5% moving forward, it will take about seven years for inflation to reach the Fed's 2% average target, assuming that the Fed starts its uh, average calculation since 2010. In line with this, the Federal Reserve's uh, latest monetary statement made commitment that its interest rates would stay near zero at least up until 2023. In ASEAN, both Bank Indonesia and Bank Negara cut their respective interest rates by 25 basis points in the last quarter to 4% and 1.75% respectively. While we expect central banks around the region to continue their dovish posture, rate cut expectations are somewhat, have somewhat receded. This is understandable given that the record size of fiscal and monetary support that has been extended will probably require some form of stock taking. And furthermore, with a growing number of countries emerging out of lockdowns, the economic momentum is looks set to rebound, albeit at a measured pace. Now, with COVID-19 infections rising in parts of Europe such as Spain and France, as well as in emerging markets such as India, government policy strategy will continue to be one that is accommodative and targeted towards so, uh, supporting social welfare and cushioning the decline in economic activity. Now, globally, we continue to expect the growing issuance of government bonds to finance the large fiscal spending. Major economies will continue with their asset purchase programs, and this will likely keep government bond yields trading within a tight range. However, this ultra-accommodative monetary policy should reignite demand for corporate bonds as investors hunt for yields. This will likely benefit emerging markets with expectations of more funds flowing into the region. On a longer-term basis, one should not be surprised to see EM currencies and local currency debt outperforming global bonds. With the Federal Reserve having fixed its policy rate at close to zero, we think that the US Treasuries should trade at these current levels in Q4 of 2020. Over in Asia, Malaysia and Thailand bond valuation seems to be fair at this juncture, given that both central banks are expected to take a pause and assess overall policy impact near economies before considering more policy easing. Indonesian government bonds, however, do offer value on a term spread basis. The corporate bond market is relatively more attractive as spreads in lower grade issues continue to trade above pre-COVID levels. With the exception of Indonesia, the opportunities in the fixed income universe are skewed towards corporate bonds as we chug along the final quarter of 2020. Globally, central banks are not likely to hike rates given the COVID cloud. As such, on a longer term, we are inclined to take some duration risks on government securities while gradually and cautiously build up our position in corporate bonds. Thank you.